It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. All right, Chuck. Here we are with chapter 11, which looks at the double angle and addition formulae. We're starting off with lesson one, which looks at cos A plus or minus B. So to begin with, a question. Eva, you love questions. What is cos 75? Can you work it out without a calculator? Go, 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 what would it be? Yep, I've no idea either. If you want to work out, say, cos of 75 without a calculator, it's difficult. However, there is a way of doing it. And to do it, what you can do is you can rewrite it and use your exact values from the trig chapter. There's a couple of formulas that you are given in the exam and they are known as your addition formulas, or addition formulae, are, or the compound angle formulae. So the first one is if you have cos of A plus B, then that is the same as cos A cos B minus sin A sin B. Or if you have cos A minus B, that is the same as cos A cos B plus sin A sin B. And note here, there is a change of sign. So if you have cos A plus B, well, in the middle here, you've got a minus. And if you have cos A minus B, in the middle here, you have a plus. For this chapter, what we're going to do is we're going to work out something like cos of 75 by rewriting it. But for that, as it says, you need your exact values. So in this chapter, you need to know the sine, cos, and tan graphs and the exact value triangles or table of by heart. You need to know them inside out. So let's begin. Example one, expand cos g plus h. So if you want to expand cos something plus something, here we've got cos a plus b, that is the same as cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. All we're doing is we're swapping a and b for g and h. So you can start rewriting this with g and h. So that's the same as a cos g and then cos h. And note here, because it's plus here, it will be minus over here. And then you'll have sine a sine b. But in this case, it's going to be sine g sine h. And that's all you do. Example one, part b, expand cos n minus 35. Well, for that one, you've got cos of something take away something. So for this, you're swapping a with n and you're swapping b with 35. So you're going to have, instead of cos a cos b, you're going to have cos n cos 35. Because you've got a minus here, what are you going to have, Lily? Plus! Well done, you'll have a plus. And then you'll have sine a, sine b, which becomes sine n, sine 35. Example two, simplify cos 170, cos 70, take away sine 170, sine 70. So for this, what we're not wanting to do is expand it. We want to simplify. So we want to go back the way. If you look at this, it's got cos something, cos something, take away sine something, sine something. Which one looks just like that? Well, it's your top line here. So here, the A and the B are 170 and 70. So you know to simplify, you can put it back into your brackets here. So you've got cos of, and then A is going to be 170, and B is going to be 70. So it's the same as cos and then 170 plus 70. From there, don't leave it there. Take it further. Ryan, I see you already have. What did you get, Ryan? Brilliant. Cos of 240. Would you leave it like that, Freddie? No, you wouldn't because you can work that out. How do you work it out? Well, this is when you have to use your exact value triangles. Except if you think about the exact value triangles, you've got 30 degrees or 60 degrees or 45 degrees, you don't have 240. So what do you do with that? Good, you're thinking about cast. So with cast, 240 degrees will be down here in T with tan. So is cos a positive or a negative there? Well, it's going to be a negative. How many degrees away from 180? Well, 60 degrees away. So that's the same as negative cos 60. From there then, you can work out cos 60 using your exact value triangles. If you're unsure about this part, just look back to the trig chapter with exact values. I'll go into this in a lot more detail. From there then, cos of 60 would be half. Brilliant. So that's the same as negative one half. And that's your answer. Example number three. Simplify cos pi over 2, cos pi over 3, plus sine pi over 2, sine pi over 3. 
So for this, again, if you're wanting to simplify, you want to think of cos something, cos something, plus sine something, sine something. So to simplify that, you're thinking which one would you have? Well, because you've got the plus in the middle, you know when you put it back into your brackets of cos something, plus or minus something, you are going to have the minus. So here in this case, a and b are going to be pi over 2 and pi over 3. So to simplify that, you'll have cos pi over 2 take away pi over 3. From there, work out pi over 2, take away pi over 3. You could do that any way you like. You could think about it in degrees. Remember, pi is 180, so you could do 180 divided by 2 is 90. 180 divided by 3 is 60, so I'm doing 90 take away 60, which is 30 degrees. I'm probably best leaving it in terms of pi, though, uh, and that would be pi over 6. Uh, or you could just go off to the side and do some fraction work. So get the lowest common denominator. So it's 3 pi over 6, take away 2 pi over 6. Either way, you just get pi over 6. Think about pi over 6 in terms of degrees, and then use your exact value triangles. If you do that, pi over 6, 30 degrees. So cos of 30 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse will be root 3 over 2. Woohoo! Next one. Example 4. Simplify cos x minus y, take away cos x plus y. So for this one, what do you want to do? First of all, Sammy, brilliant. You want to expand cos x, take away y, and you also want to expand cos x plus y. So let's do that. If you have cos x, take away y, well, that's really going to be what you have here, but instead of a and b, you're going to have x and y. So doing that, if you expand cos x, take away y, that will just become this. And then you're going to have take away, and if you expand cos x plus y, well expanding that, I'm just putting brackets around it, and that is what you get if you expand cos x plus y, which is going to be similar to this top line here. From there then, let's get rid of the brackets. So if you do that, you end up with cos x cos y plus sine x sine y, then you're taking away the cos x cos y, and then you're taking away the negative sine x sine y. So taking away a negative means you would add sine x sine y. What do you notice here? Well, your cos x cos y, you've got that, but then you're taking it away, so they are going to cancel out. And you're going to be left with sine x sine y plus sine x sine y. And simplifying that, what would you get, Grace? Brilliant! 2 sin x sin y. You've got sin x sin y, add a sin x sin y. So you have two of them. And that's your answer. Example number 5. Expand cos x plus pi over 6. So for this, to expand it, you know when you have cos of something plus something, you can expand it using your addition formula. So doing that, replace the a and the b with x and pi over 6. So doing that, you get cos x cos pi over 6 take away sine x sine pi over 6. You wouldn't leave it like that though, and why would you not leave it like that, Valley? Good, because you could work out cos of pi over 6, and you could work out sine pi over 6, and you can just use your exact value triangles. Remember pi over 6, 180 divided by 6 is 30 degrees, so this is the exact value triangle you are thinking of. And from there, if you work out cos of pi over 6, or cos 30, cos of 30, is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which will be root 3 over 2. So cos of pi over 6 becomes root 3 over 2, but you're still multiplying it by cos x. Then you're taken away, and you can again work out sine pi over 6. The sine of pi over 6 is going to be your opposite over hypotenuse, which will become a half. So it'll be a half, and you've still got the sine x. From there, you could leave it like that, but notice here you are dividing by 2, and here you're dividing by 2. So you could take out the divide by 2, or the half, as a common factor, and it would leave you with that. So half, and then you've still got root 3 cos x, take away, and that would just be sine x. Example 5, part b, cos pi minus theta. So for this one, if you want to expand it, again, you've got the form cos of something, take away something. So expanding that, you're going to have cos, cos, plus sine, sine, and replace the a and the b with pi and theta. So doing that, we get cos pi, cos theta, plus sine pi, sine theta. From here, would you leave like that? No, you wouldn't, because you know what cos pi is going to be. You also know what sine pi is going to be. However, Aaron, you wouldn't use the exact value triangles. What would you use? 
Good, you would use the graphs for this one. So thinking about your graphs, I'll make them a bit bigger here. But if you if you use the graphs then, so cos of pi, really cos of 180 degrees, think about your cos graph at pi or 180 degrees, that's gonna be down at negative one. So you can replace cos of pi with negative one. So it's negative one times theta. Sine pi, thinking about your sine graph, Again, pi is just going to be 180 degrees. The sine of 180 is just going to be zero. So that will be zero times sine theta. If you're multiplying it by zero, well, you could just then get rid of it. And the negative one times cos theta, you could just write that as negative cos theta. Woo! Example number six. Given that cos A equals pi over pi, 12 over 13, and cos b equals 3 over 5, where a and b are going to be between 0 and pi over 2, or 90 degrees, find, first of all, sine a, then sine b, and then find cos of a minus b. How would you do this one then? Does anybody have any ideas? Good. What you want to do is you want to use some triangles. So it's not your exact value triangles you use, but it's going to be triangles where you've got an angle A and you're going to have an angle B. So two separate triangles. And you know that cos A equals 12 over 13. So you know then that the adjacent over the hypotenuse is 12 over 13. So with this triangle that you drew, so let's just call this angle A over here. And you know the adjacent must be 12 and the hypotenuse must be 13. And if you know both of them, what does it let you work out? Brilliant. Something that the old dude discovered is that if you do 13 squared, take away 12 squared and square root it, you will get the other side. Obviously, this is not drawn to scale. You will just draw your triangle right in those sides and use Pythagoras to work out the other side. So that side would be 5. With the other triangle, cos B, so let's just draw another triangle, random triangle, call this angle B. And you know then the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So the adjacent is going to be 3. And the hypotenuse will be 5. So you'll have 3 over 5, which it says up here. And then working this out, what would you get for that? 4! Brilliant. So you end up with 4. Again, just use Pythagoras. 5 squared, take 3 squared, and then square root it. From there then, you can easily work out sine A. Sine A, well, you're using this triangle A. Sine is your opposite over your hypotenuse, which means that must be 5 over 13. Well done. And sine B, again, your opposite over your hypotenuse, but we want triang the triangle with B in it this time. So you will have for that one, 4 over 5. Yeah. From there, we want cos A minus B. This is going to be your addition formula. So you can expand that. You will have cos A cos B. Remember, if you're taking away here, it's going to be add. So you'll add sin A sin B. From there, well, cos A, we know what cos A is. It's giving us that in the question. It's telling us that is 12 over 13. And cos B, it's telling us is 3 over 5. We just worked out sine A and sine B. Sine A was 5 over 13. Sine B was 4 over 5. So you can replace every single one of these with the appropriate fraction. From there then, cos A cos B means cos A times cos B. So you'll end up with 12 over 13 times 3 fifths. And then you're adding on the 5 thirteenths times 4 over 5. From there then, to multiply the fractions, multiply the numerators together together, multiply the denominators together, so you end up with 36 over 65 plus 20 over 65, which gives you 56 over 65. Example 7. Using 15 degrees as 45 degrees take away 30 degrees, show that cos of 15 degrees equals root 6 plus root 2 over 4. So if you were asked to work this out before this lesson, you wouldn't have a scooby. But we now know we can replace 15 degrees with 45 degrees and 30 degrees. And if we end up working out cos or sine of 45 and 30, well, we can do that using the exact value triangles. So first of all, let's say cos of 15 degrees. Well, that's the same as the cos of 45 take away 30. From there... Well, use your addition formula that you want to use. You've got 45 take away 30. So you know you can write that as cos 45 cos 30 plus sine 45 
sine 30. From there, what would you have to use? Good, the exact value triangle. So think about the exact value triangles. And you can work out cos of 45. Cos of 45 adjacent over hypotenuse would be 1 over root 2. You're multiplying that by cos of 30, which is root 3 over 2. You're adding on sine 45 times sine 30, which is 1 over root 2 times 1 half. From there, you end up with root 3 plus 1 over 2 root 2. Really, you're multiplying the numerators and denominators here. Same here, so you end up with root 3 over 2 root 2 plus 1 over 2 root 2. And because it's the same denominator, you would just add the numerators. So root 3 plus 1 over 2 root 2. That is what we get, but it's not what we're asked to show. We're asked to show that it's equal to root 6 plus root 2 over 2. Four. So how on earth would we get that? Madiha, what are you thinking? Good, you want to rationalise the denominator. Here, there's a rational number on the bottom. Here, we have a third. So what you have to do to rationalise the denominator, you multiply the numerator and denominator by root 2. Good. So from there, that is what we ended up with. Root 3 plus 1 over 2 root 2. And then multiply the numerator and denominator by this third on the bottom. So you can say you're multiplying by root 2 over root 2. From there then, you're going to end up with root 2 times this root 3 plus 1. And here you're going to have 2 root 2 times root 2. From there then, you will end up with root 2 times root 3, which becomes root 6. Root 2 times 1 which becomes root 2, and you're going to have 2 root 2 times root 2, so root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is 2, so it's really 2 times 2, which is 4. Woo! And that's the last example, example number 7. Give some of these questions a shot, see how you get on, it's the Matheson Action Higher Book, page 154 onwards, exercise 2, check your answers, I can expand that, and blah blah blah. Good luck, any problems, just let me know. Have fun. Bye.